Kirk, thank you very much for attending Fright Fest, as ever in your case, Mill, with the world premiere of The Lair. I mean, how was it? How was it for you? Was it, I mean, it was exciting enough for us. What did you think? Uh, it was a blast. I mean, it's, <laughs> it was just such a pleasure to be back. Um, I can't believe it's been like, like 10 years or something like that. I didn't really count, but it's something like that since I've been here, which is really alarming. Um, <laughs> uh, and just such a pleasure to be back in person with another world premiere. You know, you guys did an amazing world premiere on The Descent, uh, and then your UK premiere with Doomsday and things like that. So, like, it's just just astonishing to be back here and just made me so happy. <laughs> <laughs> and Charlotte, I mean, you, 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 it went well, I think, didn't it? It went really yeah, well. Yeah, the audience seemed to like it and enjoy it. But it's my first time here. So oh. the Reckoning was here virtually, mm. so obviously not the same. So first time here and, yeah. Really, really exciting. No, it's, no, it's really, we're glad to have you both. Um, so tell us through, start from the very beginning. The Lair started exactly how? A nub of an idea, something you wanted to do? It actually started with a friend of yours saying during lockdown, during COVID, let's do a movie COVID friendly somewhere in LA, in the desert, a couple of actors, and we can just use someone's house and let's just do a really cool COVID friendly horror movie. And we're like, yeah, okay. And then the problem with Neil is he can't do, he can't write low budget stuff. Mm. So he, get, he gets very, very, very ambitious. So it's like, yeah, let's just write this small, cute, yeah. You know, well, it, 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 it quickly then. became apparent that that whole house in the desert thing was <laughs> just completely not going to work. So, um, but, uh, but we, we like, bringing aliens but and... by that time I was already knocking story ideas around in my head of like, well, maybe there's something we can do that would be a little bit kind of like lockdown mm -hmm. friendly, you know, smaller casts, more location, whatever. And it just blew up into this thing of like, well, it's Afghanistan and it's fighter pilots and it's aliens and it's, <laughs> <laughs> but it somehow it all came together and we ended up with the script that we all liked. And then, you know, Daniel came on board and was like, let's get it made. And mm -hmm. so then, you know, Highland came on board and it's it like, it's pre-sold like, like literally like hotcakes, like everybody mm -hmm. just wanted a piece of this movie. And so suddenly we found it was financed. And it was like, right, let's shoot it. And this is all like within the space of a year. Mm. So, you know, we wrote it and then the following year we, we shot it and then the following yeah. year it's out. Sure. So I mean, nice. you've said, of course, you write, you co-wrote it together. Um, and you've said about you, Charlotte, that you're the one who does the character and you do the action. Yeah. I mean, do, you, do you think that's a fair enough appraisal? Yeah, I think it's a great contrast because obviously Neil was a much more experienced writer, filmmaker than me. So he comes at it with the, you know, action, story, horror element and then as an actor i think i bring more of like you know, char you know characters mm. and drama and she's always so. saying what's my emotional arc an emotional <laughs> arc because <laughs> <laughs> i was going to ask you that actually because you know kate sinclair i mean what her background what did what did you see that did you have to get to somewhere before you could actually do it honestly? well i spoke to a british uh, fighter pilot because uh, oh, i was just like how do i how you know i have no idea no experience so um it was really helpful speaking with her um yeah, she was a fun role. I mean, we were like, our inspiration was Ripley, of mm. course. Uh, you know, just the badass, you know, Sarah Connor and stuff like mm. that. Um, and she's just fun, you know, she's fun, she's fearless, feisty. Um, yeah, it was, it was a fun role to play. Well, she's like, she was a, yeah, it was just creating this character of a career fighter pilot in, in the RAF. Yeah. Um, she's a single mom. She's recently lost her husband. She's trying to weigh up her her life mm. well, prioritizing. Know, kind of like regular domestic shit that people have to deal with like career versus mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. kids mm -hmm. and then like take that and throw it into this absolutely outrageous situation of, of, of russians and alien monsters and stuff like that regular and character how does she deal with that a regular character in extraordinary circumstances absolutely. Yeah. That, that's yeah. and the most conflict and obviously at the end of the film i think she figured out her priorities like i'm risking my job requires risking my life and my son doesn't have a father, and mm. now I know what I need to do. So, you know, it's. To put, put all needs to humanize her a bit. Sure. So. Yeah. And you've also said, of course, you like the American British dynamic. You've, always, you've, you've quoted Where Eagles Dare yeah. as being like what you thought the dynamic should be there. Yeah, I mean, I guess I thought there was some magic in that film that's never really been tapped into that much since, of like having like a sort of British thespes and an American action hero put into <laughs> the same movie. Um, and so it was that, that kind of thing, but on a slightly different scale, because it's like a group of Brits and, among, and a group of Americans all working together. And that was all tied into, um, you know, what actually happened in the world with, with the, the Brits and Americans being at war together in mm. Afghanistan and Iraq and stuff like that. So I wanted to tap into what's really going on in the world there. And mm. when we were filming it, 
Yeah, well, so I mean, you know, because you know what happened on the on the reckoning that we filmed it in 2019, and then in 2020, oh, a plague comes along mm. that we've just been made a film about. Well, in this case, we were filming about insurgents in Afghanistan, and literally, we we were shooting when uh, it was all over the news about the you know the evacuation of Afghanistan, mm. and then now that we finished it, and now the Russians are invading another country. It's mm. just like with it's some weird <laughs> portents going on with our films at the moment, mm. which is. Slightly disturbing, but our next one's about diamonds, so maybe something good <laughs> will come of that. Now you said, on, you said on stage, of course, there was actually no boot camp rehearsal. Now, I mean, I'm actually staggered that you actually managed to be. So, was it a really case of you blocking it out on the day? We did block it. The thing is, we didn't have any rehearsal time. You know, we're talking to the stunt team, they're like, you'd have like months to rehearse mm -hmm. this. We well, we didn't really rehearse at all. Maybe, maybe half you a day a, for you a You had a few days to work with the stunt guys on a, on a, a few bits and pieces. Very, very minimal. Practicing some dives and rolls and yeah, reloading yeah. and all that kind of stuff. And I, I think I had two days um, and like half a day per sequence. So, yeah, that was tough. So, but, but we did we did block. We did block. It, it would be nice to have one of those like Hollywood style week long boot camps for everybody, but sure. um, just that, uh, you know, just but it, it yeah. wasn't, well, we weren't on that level. The <laughs> British actors obviously haven't really. Had much experience yeah, well, that's, that's the thing that you find working with British oh. actors uh, as opposed to American actors is that they have some of them have like zero experience of handling firearms. Mm -hmm. um, so everybody had to like learn from scratch, but everybody picked it up pretty quickly and, and you know knew how to behave. And, and I was always like on top of it of like, you know, this is what would happen, this is what would happen. So, uh, no, we blocked things out thoroughly, we, we were never kind of winging it with the action stuff. <laughs> <laughs> and tell me more about the whole, you, you really had just one hero alien suit, really. You said you had a backup. Yeah. But I mean, and you literally just well smoke some mirrors, really, right? I mean, how, so how did you do all this? Uh, it, every trick in the book, it wasn't lighting, it was like, smoke. lighting <laughs> keeping them in the dark, backlighting them, cover, covering them in slime all the time. Mm -hmm. uh, but then in like certain cases, like uh, toward the end, there's a fight in an elevator. Mm. And we brought out the second costume, uh, because it was near the end of the shoot, so if we damaged it, then we wouldn't be in quite so much trouble. Oh. But um, so we had like two there, and we'd film them and then whip off them, and then we'd restage <laughs> the action on the other side with the same two and a different actor, and we'd whip onto them, yeah. and then in the edits we cut it together, and it looks like right. you know we got four. So <laughs> oh, when they were running towards you on the fault, that was how did you do that? Uh, yeah, with that one, it was just a locked off camera and just got the same one to run down the hill about twenty times, and then just <laughs> the magic put of them the movie together. is the magic of the movie. It is. I mean, I mean, was it a kick and a scramble? Was it a challenge? Yeah. I mean, yeah. was it, it? It looks like it was hard work. It was. It was. It was. It was. I, think, I think the most challenging thing, well, as an actor, it would be the uh, getting into the mindset and understanding and appreciating. The world of a fighter pilot, hmm. and then as a like producer standpoint, I would say the time we had to, 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 to shoot it. I mean, we had twenty five days, hmm. which sounds like not too bad. But, but on some of those days or some of those nights, hmm. when you find out that in Budapest in the summertime there is only like seven hours of darkness to do a night shoot, so, so seven that's hours really on like camera. seven hours a day to film in, um, and then sometimes during the day it was like we were filming in forty degree heat hmm. in these quarries that were just kicking this heat at you all day long so yeah it was it was pretty tough but we got there mm. I mean, you said budapest i mean you shot the reckoning in budapest as well i mean and yeah. i mean there again because you knew the cast crew the crews were all good uh you'd work with the same people again did you uh, uh a lot of the same people um a few new faces uh same dp um different like first ad on this one and things like that but we had a, lot, had a local first ad which actually think you know helped us enormously yeah. right. um but it was more that we knew the infrastructure out there right. we knew the tax credit um and once we figured out the locations of it all of like trying to do afghanistan and budapest um then it all kind of fell into place and it just made a lot of sense to do it there mm. just briefly talk about your new film we've just finished one duchess yeah we just literally just finished it last week um, just give us a brief sort of rundown of what that's about. Uh, we originally conceived it, because we actually wrote the Duchess script before both The Reckoning and The Lair, but we originally conceived it as like a female Scarface. Yeah, we, we were sitting there one day and I was like, we're just admiring the great, you know, movies like Goodfellas and Scarface and Casino. I was like, well, I haven't seen a, a well, it has, hasn't been a few great gangster movies, but like something like that, but like a female Scarface, like. As outrageous and crazy and as, you know, over the out, top. Out, yeah, over the top <laughs> as possible. Yeah. And that's kind of where it stems from. So you are the title Duchess then? Yeah. 
Okay. Just to earn that title. Uh, oh, just yeah. Just to earn that title. East End London girl who yeah. uh... <laughs> gets involved with a diamond smuggling. Well, I can't wait to see it, as always. I mean, you, you whisk through those genres like there's nobody's business. <laughs> but listen, once again, thank you so much for, you know, spending the time with us at Pride Fest. We love you here. You know that. And I'm so glad that Lair played really well as it did. So thanks so much. Thank you. So happy to be here. <laughs>